Hey, you might have seen this effect on TikTok or somewhere else where uh, it's sort of this freeze frame effect. Things come flying into view and then sync up with the main ongoing video. Uh, we're going to take a look at how to recreate it today. It's pretty fun, not too hard at all. I'm excited. Let's get started. All right, I have created a new fresh timeline here. This is a 1080 by 1920 timeline, so we have this vertical aspect ratio. And I'm going to drag in the video clip we are going to be using. Now this clip is longer than what we're needing, but we don't just need to trim it down. If I find the area I wanna use, then right before I come in, I can trim this clip till I slide out again, great. And I'm gonna slide this over to the beginning of my timeline and then, I'm going to select that clip, right click and create a new compound clip. For a lot of editing projects, this wouldn't be necessary, but with uh, how we are going to work with this clip inside of Fusion, this is going to be super important. So now we have the clip, just the actual footage we want, and this compound clip is stored in our media pool, so if we drag an instance of that, it is just the clip we want. But we're just gonna use this one compound clip, at least for now, on the edit page. So we can just throw our playhead anywhere over that clip and click this button to open the Fusion page. That's great, and now we are on this main Fusion layout. We have our media in, which is that source clip, and that goes to the media out. Anything we do on the Fusion page, any additional nodes we add, it'll all get processed, and then whatever is going into the media out, that is what will appear on the edit page. Now we're gonna quickly circle back to that compound clip, because I'm gonna start scrubbing through until we get to the first main thing we want frozen in place. So it's this controller. This is the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor, by the way, a nifty uh, little device. Specifically, if you also use the DaVinci Resolve cut page, and I believe it's still coming with a full license of DaVinci Resolve, so it's a nifty way to get some physical hardware when you're ready to upgrade your software as well. But we're gonna scrub until that just comes to that rest point. You can tell I'm kind of syncing up with the music there. And now we're going to find that demo compound clip we created, drag that into our workspace down here, and you'll see that will create a new media in. Now this is important. If we look at our source media in, we don't have nearly as many options. Because this source media in is actually referencing the edit page, it gets a little complicated, but you'll see when we look at that new media in that was created when we dragged in that compound clip, now we have some really interesting controls. We have a global in and out, trim, and options to hold the first or last frame. Now here, I'm going to look at this number here, which is the number of frames into this composition. So we know at 260 frames, that's when we want this eventual cutout we will make to stop being a cutout and disappear or effectively sync up with the main video. So I'm gonna select that copy, that 260. I'm gonna paste that into both sides of the trim so that now this media in, if we pull that up in viewer two and go back to the beginning of our timeline, it will be that frame we want, but it will only exist for one frame. But we can also come to this hold first frame and also paste in 260. So this is our main video. This is this will be the freeze frame of the speed editor. And you see this just will hold until it gets to that sync up point. And then this whole clip will disappear. So when we layer these over each other, we can have just that portion animate in and then disappear synced up with the video. Let's go ahead and do that again. After the speed editor, we have this little guy. I didn't super intend for this to be showing off gear. I created a loose uh, theme for this TikTok of just handy things on my desk but they're also pretty cool. This is the Korg Nano Control. I use this for audio control in DaVinci Resolve. You can use these faders to actually set the audio level of clips in your timeline. It's nifty. But we'll see this freeze frame happens at 327. So I will pull in a new copy of that compound clip, copy that, paste that on both sides of the trim and on the hold first frame. And we can move on to these books that come over the face and then split. Cool. Repeat that process again. We are trimming that clip and then having it hold for that same amount of frames. And now this will be the laptop. Great. That same process. Cool, I will just sample that one. Yep, it holds throughout here. And when it syncs up, it disappears. And then we just have one final one taking this sip. Cool. 7.22, in, out, hold, first frame. Awesome. And just to make this convenient, I'm gonna stack these nodes, 
and then we're gonna rig up a nice little simple node tree. Now, because these are all layers that will be disappearing, one important thing we need to do uh, is click this button over here to make a background. And I'm gonna make sure that all these sliders are down to zero. So if we preview this, it is a fully transparent layer. And this background, when we start merging it to all these media in, we need to make sure that this background node is coming into the yellow background node so that when any of these source clips disappear, we always have that background node in the back. Otherwise, uh, if we had this first node disappear, it would cause the rest of the node tree it is attached to to fail as well. But from there, we can just sync up the rest of these media in nodes like this, connecting them all as new foreground elements. Great. And finally bringing them into and over this main video clip. Great. Now, simple masking. I'm gonna come back to this first media in here. I'm going to uh, copy that playhead location again and paste it in here so we jump to it. Uh, and this is for an interesting reason. If I have this media in selected and I click to add a mask, it will add that polygon, but it will instantly start to affect that image. And because we haven't drawn or created a polygon, there is no mask to tell us what to see of the image. But I have our source clip over here. So this is what I am going to zoom in and start to mask. I am using this polygon mask and this default pen tool. And for here, a lot of the things we have nice edges. So I'm just gonna draw this around, pull to create these handles that will go around these rounded edges. And then real quick, I will close this loop. And hey, now we have seen once we finish that mask, it pops up over here as well. So if I were to preview this first merge node, which is the background, and then this media in clip over that, you'll see it will play alongside that source video. And then once it gets to the point at syncing, it will disappear. So now we just need to repeat this process with the rest of our media in. I'm going to create a handful of these polygon nodes and just position them really quickly over this media in quickly remind myself which one is the books this one this one will require two polygon nodes and we can sync all these up jump to the next one find the time that works for that as well again make sure we are watching this one now I can zoom in and start to draw on this polygon mask I am keeping this very simple while I'm going over it live. I spent quite a bit more time making sure my masks were nice and clean for my full sample. And I definitely recommend you get comfortable with these masking tools so you can really dial this in the way you want it. On to books. Great. And here, since we have two books, which will be separate masks, I did create two polygon nodes. Less rounded corners on these. But we will have our first book, second polygon node for this second book. Great. You see those pop up just fine. On to the next one. Quick masking, uh, dragging the points to get these nice rounded edges. Very quick. In this demo, you also see my fingers. I don't care about that. Great. Last one. In this polygon node. In the demo, I did spend quite a bit more time going around here, especially any softer edges or hair can be sort of tricky. But hey, we are speeding through it now. Great, great, great. Oops, great. Awesome. All right, quick recap of what we have done so far. We, we had our source footage and we dragged that onto a timeline where we were able to make a compound clip of just the section we know we wanted to use. When we opened that clip in the Fusion page, we were able to drag in copies of that compound clip and trim those using the inspector. So we effectively had a still image that held from the beginning of our clip to when that still matched up with our source clip and then it disappeared. Then we went back through and created custom polygon masks on all of these new sources. So it was just the element we wanted isolated that would come flying into view and sync up with our video. 
So now the only real thing left to do is animate. And believe it or not, some work has already been done for us by the process we've used. We know the exact frame when these clips need to sync up with the video. So we know the exact end keyframe of our animations. If I preview this final merge node, you'll see here at the end it looks fine, but if we go back to the beginning, we will see all of those individual stills just floating in air. And they will stay there until they sync up with a source clip, when again, they will disappear one by one. Now, all of the animation we are going to create will happen on these merge nodes. If you select any merge node and make sure your inspector is open, you will see all of these transform options like you might find on a transform node. But when you're using a merge node, these apply only to the foreground element, which in each of these cases, are these new freeze frame clips. So I'm gonna select that first clip. Again, copy the frame count where that disappears jump to that. I'm gonna hop over to my merge, set keyframes on center for this first one, then come back a fair bit and drag this over to wherever you want to. You can also use these tactile controls on screen. I'm gonna keep this first one simple down here. So if we just preview that merge, you'll see our video is playing and then this comes flying in and you can see that it will sync up in that location just in time to disappear and the video will keep playing. On to the next one, I'll create this second merge find the frame where this one disappears. On that merge two, I will set a center and a size keyframe, come back a little bit, make sure I'm previewing it that that time. And then we'll just scale this like really up, drag this over like here, that'll come flying in, zoom down, sync up. Then we'll move on to this next one, these two books, again, I am Grabbing the time for that, pasting it in so we can preview that and our source clip at the same time. And just come down to the merge. Let's have some fun with angle and center this time. Come back a few frames so we can really rotate those. Shift them um, all the way down here. And we'll see what that looks like as these rotate into place and then Great. Onto the laptop, same thing, move over. Center size angle. Come back a little bit. I'm gonna shrink this one down a whole lot. And crank out this angle so it really sort of flies in there. All the way, all the way from right below. So that'll spin and spin and, yep, cool. And last one. Grab the time, move over. So we can set a keyframe just on center and a little bit of angle. And this one will, oh, whoop. Then we can come back a bit. So that'll slide over. And on a bare bones level, that could be it. You can always mess with these keyframes as much as you want, isolate as many elements as you want. But now we are gonna jump over to the edit page and let this cache so we can check it out. We're here on the edit page, you can see uh, we have this blue bar over our entire scene, there's no red, so we know this has cached. I'm just gonna hop over and grab the actual audio we know we want on this as well. Paste that in. And for super quick work of it, I think that's pretty good. A lot of the high profile examples of this effect go crazy. They're jumping around, their limbs are flying in. You can make some really cool stuff and you can make all of it for free in DaVinci Resolve. So if you use this video to make this effect for yourself and put it out somewhere, I would love to see it. You can always leave a comment here below or find me on Twitter or other places. And of course, stick around for more awesome stuff inside DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.